May 24, 2023, Fetty Watt was sentenced to years in prison for being a part of a multi-million dollar drug ring. But where did everything go wrong? How did Fetty go from a top charter artist to prison? The New Jersey native Fetty been making music for a minute. All the way back in 2013, he started making music. But he was rapping then instead of singing how he do now. And that decision to start singing was going to change his life. 2014, a year after he started making music for real, he dropped the song the whole world know real well. Trap Queen. And it was like this one song was going to change his life in both good and bad ways. I'm talking about that man was going on quick. 2015, XXL Freshman, he dropped the project. And by that summer, that man had another hit out. So really just... Think about it. Really think about how hot he was. Then on top of that, he just got in the game. But it ain't just stop at music, though. He started connecting with any and every artist you could think of. And you know, whenever a rapper start connecting with other rappers, problems always come up. One day, them problems did come up. Fetty got tapped in with Drake through guess who out of all people? Kanye West. See, back during that time, Drake remixed Fetty's song, but it was a problem. When Fetty came into the game, he came in right with his boy Monty. And all Fetty wanted to do was put his boy Monty on, just get him through the door into the music space. And with that specific song, My Way, Fetty wanted to use that one to put Monty on. So song, doing good. And with that, Drake ended up getting on the remix. But this is where the problems came. One thing about me at that time, bro, nobody could tell me. Like at that, at that time in my life, like 2015, 2016, you couldn't tell me nothing. And when I said really, I you see, you seem mad humble. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like you always, always yeah, kind of like I be chilling, bro. But like you know, like I felt like, like I had a plan of how the was supposed to go. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that was supposed to be Monty's record. That was Monty's breakthrough record. Like he was supposed to, boom. All right, Fetty Wap, Fetty Wap goes on tour. Monty goes on tour. You know what I'm saying? It was it supposed to be? Fetty Wap and then Monty on the tour with Fetty Wap. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, nah, it was supposed to be. That's like, the alley then. Yeah, it was actually that was the alley oop. Like, ah, right, you take this song right here, boom. And if you notice, even in the video, we show more Monty than they do me. When he jumped on the record, you know, the first thing I asked him, like, yo, can you just take my verse off and keep Monty up there and it just be let me be on the hook? Wait. Yeah. You asked Drake if he could take you off the record and keep your man's on. Yeah, it's like take just leave me on the hook, you know, like baby, won't you come my way? Yeah. But leave Monty verse up there. You do your verse and let it be, you know. Like, we work it like that, you know what I'm saying? So that way my mans could be, you know what I mean? My mans got, he he on now. Like, he on. It, it, he don't, once you get a record like that, you good. Like, you know what I'm saying? You you don't got to worry about shit no more, you feel yeah. me? And when it came out, bro, that shit just came out on SoundCloud. And then when Monty Verse came out, I remember that shit. Like, even if you play the SoundCloud version right now, that should be like, uh, Monty would come on like, huh? Then be like, doom, doom. And then yeah, it just yeah. fades out. He's pretty much on the record. And then I was just like. Wait, so he never sent it to you then? So he just put right. it out on SoundCloud. I want to say he did it, but I guess somebody from his camp did. I thought 300 was just too cheap and wouldn't pay to clear it. It's Drake. See, this Drake we talking about ain't no Drake song gonna leak if he ain't do it himself. That man got too much power for some random leaker to hack into his camp and leak his music. And you know, the craziest part about this, Fetty was really just trying to put his man's Monty on at the time. Fetty had Monty featured on his debut album. 10 different times. If you really go look at Fetty First Project, it's basically a collab album with him and Monty. But back to the song, right? After it got leaked and got all these streams, Fetty had an album coming. And that Drake situation left a bad taste in Fetty mouth. So when this album came around, he ain't put the song with Drake on there. And Drake must have felt some type of way because you heard what Fetty said. They ain't said a word to each other since 2015. And at that time, Fetty really didn't need no Drake feature. He didn't need Drake at all because he was one of the hottest artists during that time period. And he just felt like Drake was being a little too disrespectful. that wasn't all 2015 had in store for him. September 2015, Fetty got in a real bad car accident. A car smacked him while he was riding his motorcycle. And his leg broke in three different places. And for a minute after that, he was just riding around in a wheelchair. But 2016 was just as good of a year for him. He had more hits. He dropped more music. And for a minute, he was doing good and staying relevant. But it was a problem, a real big problem. See, Fetty would ride around with all these niggas. I'm talking about 20, 30 niggas with him all the time. So if he go in the designer store to buy some clothes, he buying everybody with him some clothes. He go buy some food, everybody getting food. He got to catch a flight, everybody got to get a ticket. So he was really paying for each and every single person riding around with him. So really sitting and thinking about all that money he was spending. Then on top of that, Fetty said at this time, he was just spending money crazy. He said he was paying about 150000 a month just in bills. So like, let's say we go to the mall, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At this time, I, I love Robin Jeans. 
Right. Yeah, this nah, talking about five hundred dollars a pair of jeans. Tell me they gave time. you some type of fucking. Of course, nah. He's we still cool to this okay. day, bro. That's okay. my guy. To carry, good. Um, you'll see people like this. Oh, uh, one of those. Yeah, you know what I mean. So if you buy shit for yourself, you gonna look like the just a greedy ass, selfish exactly. ass. So then the type of game, I'm like, all right, everybody grab a pair. And then my worst, my worst shopping experiences was Barney's when the ball main shit came out. Yeah. We're talking about $1,300, $1,500 $1, pair of jeans, bro. I'm buying 30 pair of jeans. Now, mind you, I'm only wearing one pair, but we spending forty five. I'm spending 45000 in this on jeans, bro. I ain't even get my shirt yet. Damn. So you, you just... And by the way, this happens to a lot of, like, you know, entertain. Like, you don't know... Sometimes you might get in it. Like, you're probably paying some bills. You don't know exactly what your name is on, what you yeah, owe. I was doing, like, $150,000 a month in bills. But I would see that's what I was doing. Like, matter of fact, yeah, if I had to... It was jewelry and like apartments. I had a lot of apartments. Like, why? I don't. For bro, everybody or just nah, you? I just really just. Like, I didn't like staying in hotels. Like, I ain't like, I don't like hotels. I don't like being. I don't like people just could knock on my door when they feel like it. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, Freddie Sunday night, let's go, let's go see what's roomy in. Yeah. Like, I ain't like that. Shit, so. Was you have like, of, like five like apartments or something like that? Yeah, I have like maybe like four apartments in Jersey. I had like. So apartments in Miami, a couple apartments in LA. Then I have houses in LA. I have a house in Jersey, like a house in Miami. Like I was just doing. Yo, this house. All right, so, so, so wait, because like when I when I started looking at my bills, like when I started paying my, myself, like I'm like, what the fuck? I'm paying ten thousand dollars a month for car insurance. Like I'm like, well, what I'm doing that for only I'm only driving about two, three of these motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? And that's when I learned, you know, you can keep your cars, just take the insurance off if you're not going to drive it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, simple shit kind of started getting me, like, I, right, I only travel, I was traveling with 14, 15, 16, maybe sometimes 30 niggas. And, Yo, I know. And, yeah, the, yo, there was one time somebody told me that you were traveling with, like, two DJs, three hype. Man, I'm like, what the yeah. f I'm like, what you got going on? Yeah, it was, it, was, it was ridiculous, bro. It was like, it was just no, ain't nobody give a f that was getting paid. People were scared to say to me because they didn't want to stop their money. Like, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, they, they call yes, man. But 2016 had something else in store for a lawsuit. A couple of them. See, if you remember the song that put them on was Trap Queen. And before he even made that song, it was someone else planning to make a song to that same beat. A man that went by the name Laser. See, Laser said he bought the rights to that beat all the way back in 2014. And when he heard Trap Queen blow up on the same beat that he bought, he wasn't liking that. Fast forward some months after Trap Queen dropped, Laser claimed the original producer tried to come to him and buy the beat back. But see, with Fetty, Fetty was covered. He bought that beat under contract. It was in paper. So if anything was going to happen, it wasn't going to happen to Fetty. It was going to happen to the producer. Producer. This is what Fetty attorney said. Fetty legally bought the beat from Fad, the producer, and has the contract to prove it. So if Laser is awarded damages, Fetty says he'll go out there Fad to cover it. But Laser ain't just stop it trying to get the rights to the beats and get some money. He wanted to destroy that song. He wanted that song took down from everywhere. But y'all see, that ain't happening. Right at the end of 2016, his old homeboy claimed Fetty was stealing lyrics from him. So in the studio when Fetty made 679, his man's P. Dice claimed he helped write some of the song. And this is what P. Dice said. He said Fetty verbally told him he would give him 16.9% of the profits. But that wasn't all he was saying Fetty did. Allegedly, after Dice left the studio, Fetty got on the computer and deleted his whole part of the song, his whole verse. Then on top of deleting the song, he lowered that man percentage from 16.9 to 5%. And the thing is, that nigga P-Dice was in the music video. He heard the version of the song without him on it. And I guess it ain't registering his head until after because he was hated. He went straight to his lawyer claiming he wanted seven million in damages. And that Fetty Wap removed him from the Remy Boys, the whole LLC Fetty had going on at that time. And it was just this whole thing going on. But P-Dice really wasn't playing. He wanted that money from bro. So, so there was a line on one of the tracks about, about coming for Fetty's head, man. Are we still coming for Fetty's head? What's going on with Hell the lawsuit? Yeah, man. You don't, you don't, you don't, you coming for that head, You don't take your foot off the neck. You don't take your foot off the neck until he pay you what he owes you. Fetty's camp did reach out to you and offer to settle for a million dollars. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. How long ago was that? Hell yeah. Was that like recently or? It's like a couple months back. Okay. And you said no? Yeah, I said no. So you want you seven? It's seven or nothing. It's a lot of us, man. It's seven million or nothing. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Nah, nah, nah. We ain't going no lower than three. 
Okay. We ain't going no lower than three. You heard shit if this out, all man. gets gets False settled and shit. you get what you're owed, would you ever work with Fetty again? No. Nah, we ain't rocking like that. Nah, man. nah, nah. I can't. I can't say I would. You heard? I ain't good at being phony. You heard? I'm, 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 I'm authentic, nigga. So like, once you once you show me the fake side. I mean, it's a dub. It's uh -huh. over for you. But that's enough about P Dice, though. What did Fetty even have to say? This man was doing full interviews about Fetty Wap, and Fetty just was cool. First of all, 2013 was the start of the Remy Boys. Um, we officially got LLC in 2014 of February, I believe it was. Um, the LLC consisted of two CEOs, Remy Boy Monty and Remy Boy Fetty Wap. Pure Hell Game, which was Dice label, consisted of two CEOs, P Dice and E Dirt. RGF consisted of two CEOs, two G's and the Grit. So, anybody that know me, know I didn't see it was fair for Dice to have ownership of three, of two, to be. CEOs of two different groups if he was already doing his own. Now, mind you, at this time, Remy Boys wasn't popping. Niggas wasn't really fucking with Remy Boys. Pierre Hell Gang was the wave. Everybody was following wave. Facts. Now, what, what is facts is once Fetty Wap got popping and Trap Queen started traveling the world, Fetty Wap got popping, not the Remy Boys. So every show that Fetty Wap got booked for since the beginning at Wild Bull till now I'm doing 60,000 60, people shows. Where the was dice let's let's talk about some facts when we did the cake team video where the f was dice when we did the throw it back video where the f was dice all right dice came out the f end dice did what the f he wanted to do okay now let's go to uh hold like that for me now let's go to let's let's fast forward to about let's say uh the first time i went to la all right June 14th, June 24th, I think it was on a Thursday or something like that. 2014. Okay, who the f went to Cali? Nit the Grit, Fetty Wap, and D. Anthony. Now, let's let's talk some facts. Dice, and Monty, and Dirt were supposed to be there. Now, from my understanding, Dirt and Grit had some understandings that Dirt ain't know how to book a flight. That's why Monty wasn't there, that's why Dice wasn't there, and that's why E. Dirt wasn't there. So what did happen when I was gone was my song that I made on my birthday, June 7, 2014, 679, Dice decided to remix while I was gone. Okay. Dice was never a part of 679. All right. Why? Where the f*** was Dice? Nobody f*** knows. We called Dice all day on my birthday. He didn't show up, so we had to go to the, um, to the party on the boat. Now, if you go on my Instagram and go to my birthday, I had a white true pants, a black shirt. Dice was standing right next to me, and Monty was next to me at the party. Dice was never on 679. So, if you're a real fan of Fetty Wap, and you go back to before when I first dropped 679, you never heard Dice. Okay. And I have papers to show, just in case people want to think I'm bullshitting, or they think this is lies. Dice was never a part of the Remy Boys legally. Dice was a part of the Remy Boys because they hit the grit. So when he said to y'all, Fetty Wap kicked them out, yes, I f***ing kicked you Yo, I didn't only kick you out once, my nigga. So don't lie on me. I kicked you out way more than once. Grit was the second reason, you, was the first reason you came back. Now, let's go to North Carolina. I had a show in North Carolina. It was me, you, Buck, and Murd. We got stuck in North Carolina. We had to, we had to uh, go back to the airport. We sitting in the car. You having an argument like, yo, y'all the funny as hell. You don't even want to pay me. La -da 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 -da. Okay, you're right. So don't say I didn't pay everybody, my Everybody got paid because they was there every f***ing time. Where the f*** were you, my nigga? So when I spazzed on you, matter of fact, I ain't even gonna say it like that because I don't want you to get all heartbroken. Listen, when we had our conversation and I told your ass, my this is my sh These people are booking Fetty Wap, not the f***ing Remy boys. I was telling the truth. It's funny how you ain't come to none of the little shows, but you pop up to all the big shows. Why? Because I let you f***ing come. I let you f***ing 
perform with me. Yes, I did. Fetty Life was real hit around this time. Just a few months later, he was out in a New Jersey deli at about 5 a.m. He was in there eating and everything was good till some dudes walked in there strapped. They started pressing Fetty and they got the fighting in there. And in the middle of all that, the dudes ended up snatching Fetty chain. But after Fetty got his chain took, some shots rang out and three different people got hit. But them chains was still out in the street. And the way everybody got caught up and the way everybody went to jail wouldn't be a surprise to nobody. Self snitch. After the chain got snatched, this man got on IG posting about it, posting pictures of him with the chain that just got stolen. And just a little bit after posting that chain, he got booked. TMZ wrote, one of Fetty Wap's longtime rivals arrested in connection with the robbery and shooting that broke out Sunday morning. And the suspect was flashing Fetty's stolen chain on Instagram. But the thing about Fetty, he was standing on what he believed. He ain't believe in no snitching. He ain't filed no police report, get involved with it or nothing. He said it was going to be handled in the streets. And even though it was all this controversy going on, there would be a problem. A problem with his music career itself. See, Fetty Wap dropped the album in 2015 and didn't drop another project for years after that. The world wouldn't get another Fetty project until 2018. In them years, when no project did have an effect on Fetty, he realized something. He finally came out and realized that he fell off. Like I said, now, now we go, like I was saying, like, it was, I know for a fact I was clearing 100,000 every day. Now, the day I woke up and I only made like 40,000, I'm like, uh uh, so ain't right. Mm. You get what I'm saying? And I'm like, 40,000, 40,000, 40,000, 30,000, hey, we want to book Fetty for 50,000. I'm like, what the? Oh, uh, okay, 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 okay. This, this is what time? This is the end of 2017. Okay. Continue. And I'm just like, I'm like, all right, it's happening. I'm like, this, this, where that, this, this, where shit are getting dark. You didn't think in your mind, like, all right, let me just come with another hit. And I'm going to bring that shit up. I did. I actually made one. Wake up. Yeah. Wake up went, wake up went platinum in maybe like two weeks. God you damn. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So once everybody kind of, like, once I started slimming shit down, bro, I started noticing, like, oh, damn, like, bro, you, you make a lot of money, bro. Like, you. Because I used to question myself, like, damn, what the I just made all this money, Dad. What was was money doing? just coming in and going out? Like, how much, like, if you don't want to say it's cool, how much is the most you saw, like, in your account? You're like, what the f? The, the most I saw in my account? Yeah, just 22? in. Huh? 22. Like, 22. Yeah. Like, 2. 22 million? Yeah. Holy sh. Yeah, yeah I was spent I spent a lot too. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I saved a lot of money, bro. 22 million. I saved a lot of money. And this bro. is even after you're spending a grip on your yeah, yeah. You're, you're financing a lot of other lifestyle. Because I wouldn't spend unless I knew I was making it. So it wasn't like I said, it wasn't like I, I made $22 million at one time. Nah, that's not how it happened. I didn't make $22 million off just shows. Like, I did, bro, I did so many features. I did so many features, I don't even remember how many. Like, I got phones of notes of songs, like, of just other people's songs that I did. And even after he realized that his life was still hectic, April 2020, Fetty ended up in a real bad situation. Fetty had a party at his house and a woman who was there was claiming he was wild. XXL wrote a woman filed a complaint against Fetty for battery, negligence, and intentional infliction of emotional distress. The lawsuit was filed on April 6th that alleges he threatened, punched, strangled, and violently grabbed the woman by her throat. She said he allegedly lunged at her, grabbed her, was choking her, all that. Then, right, not even a month later after all that went down, Fetty, the strange wife, claimed that back in 2019, he was allegedly putting his hands on her. But 2020 will also be the year he publicly came to terms with falling off. See, before he realized it by himself, he sat down and was like, damn, I'm falling off. But this would be the first time he told the world that he understood that he fell off. Because someone commented on IG one day, they was like, damn, how did Fetty Wap fall off? And he responded saying this, bad business, managers, greed, and selfishness. But it's almost over. I got rid of all that goofy stuff going around me. Now I can focus on the music. I'm really about to go up. And after this, sadly, Fetty Wap life kept going downhill. He went through something no one should have to go through. Summer 2021, his four-year-old daughter passed away. And ain't no telling how that man was feeling. I mean, like, I lost my daughter. You feel me? I lost my daughter June 24th, girl. Like, I got that phone call. I got that phone call 12.36 p.m. Like, I, I'll never forget this day in my life, girl. Like, I was sitting down to Miami. I was sitting down to Miami at this Cuban spot I go to out there. And I had ordered me, I had ordered me a steak skirt, a, 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 a skirt steak, rice and beans, and a lemonade, bro. It's my favorite meal, feel me? 
and my at twelve thirty six p.m. I seen my um my uh my baby mother number pop up on my phone, and at the time we wasn't really getting along like that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I'm thinking to myself like, oh like I'm about to see my baby. You feel me? Like I'm about to see my daughter. And when I answered the phone twelve thirty six p.m. Bro, I never forget it. Like, like she looked at me, and when she looked at me, I'm like, what's up? Like, like what's up? Then she dropped her head. I hung the phone up. Like, nah. Like, nah. What's up? Like. Then she called me back again, you feel me? Then I seen the tears coming down. She like, get over here, like, right now. Come here, right now. Like, come here right now. Then she showed the police officer. The police officer was like, I'm sorry. When he said I'm sorry, that's when I already like, you feel me? Like, so I say that to say this, like, none of my life will ever be that bad that I, that, that's the worst thing that could ever possibly happen to me in my life. You understand? So, and I, and I say that to say my hair always hard, bro. Like, I, I was in a real dark place after that, bro. It was right. It was two weeks after my thirtieth birthday. I turned thirty. I turned thirty June seventh. My daughter passed June twenty fourth. You feel mm. me? And I'm like, what am I supposed? Like, why? You know what I mean? Like, it, it was no. Like, you know, at, at, when you come from a certain, when you come from a certain place, you looking for somebody to. You know what I mean? Somebody did something. To, you know what I mean? I'm about to go. You know what I mean? Like, you trying to. You're trying to justify, like, it was somebody else that did this. You know what I'm saying? And it's no reason, bro. And still to this day, bro, I, I still slip I still slip into a dark place, but I, I, I catch myself because I know she's smiling with me. Like, you know what I mean? I know she's watching down on me. I know she's looking at me like, Daddy, it's all going to be good. You feel me? Daddy, it's okay. Like, she be holding my hand, bro. Like, even sometimes I be I be daydreaming sometimes and I be seeing her and she just woke up to me like it's all good. And even though life did hit him like that, just a few months later, that man was right back in some problems. October 29th, 2021, Fetty got booked by the FBI right before stepping on stage at Rolling Loud. XXL wrote, from the Department of Justice, Fetty and five other individuals have been indicted on charges of conspiring to distribute and possess controlled substances. Five of the defendants also face firearm charges. Between June of 2019 and June of 2020, the crew is said to have distributed more than 100 kilograms of deadly and addictive drugs, including heroin, fent, on Long Island in New Jersey, allegedly obtaining the drugs from the West Coast. They used the USPS and drivers with hidden vehicle compartments to transport more than 100 kilograms of cocaine, heroin, fentanyl, and crack across the country. The investigation into the alleged ring reportedly yielded 1.5 million in cash, 16 kilograms of coke, 2 kilograms of heroin, and numerous fentanyl pills. All six defendants are currently in custody and face a maximum of life in prison if convicted. And I don't think y'all realize how much that man was moving. Over 220 pounds he moved across the country. But it get crazy than that. Fetty even had correctional officers working with him. On top of that, serving finish. Crazy. Y'all niggas be careful out here. Y'all don't know what these people be doing. And I'm saying this because, like I said, Fetty had this going across the whole country. Ain't no telling who that done got passed around through. But XXL wasn't done. They had more to say. The pipeline of this drug investigation ran thousands of miles from the West Coast to the communities here in our area, Long Island. Contributing to the addiction and overdose epidemic we done seen time and time again. But even after everything they said and everything he done did and so that man still got bond five hundred thousand dollar bond but still bond but that bond ain't last long no that man just wasn't thinking just a month or two after getting released on bond fetty really wasn't thinking he called the nigga he claimed snitched on him and started threatening him over the phone fetty called the man on facetime not even just regular call showing the guns threatening him all that with his face and he did all that right when he got free on bond he probably like how do i know all the details because the man recorded the whole call from the second Fetty incident fall to the second he hung up, he just had Fetty record. And that video was a ticking time bomb. That vid was sitting for months. And in August of 2022, it finally caught up to him. He was right back locked up. And less than two weeks later, he pled guilty in a drug trafficking case. And we wouldn't know how much time he would get until 2023. Six years in prison. That man gonna have to sit. And he did it to himself. After he got locked up, he was talking about what was going on. He said the reason he started doing all that, serving all these drugs and all this illegal work, was because of Corona. In the beginning or about 2020, things began to change for Fetty. There were no opportunities to perform. His income was limited. Fetty 
was sued personally. He was going through a divorce and involved with a tour manager that was stealing from him. While the bills kept coming in, the money to pay him was running out. At about that same time, Fetty lost his grandparents and several other people that was close to him. Depression and panic became the set in. Fetty took enormous pride in his ability to provide for his children and lend support to other family members. He is described as a people pleaser and a person who gains great satisfaction from taking care of others. Suddenly, it felt like life was going to reverse. He became ashamed when he wasn't able to keep up the lifestyle that he created for so many. His judgment became impaired. Desperate to keep up with his financial obligations, Fetty became involved with an instant offense for a few months in the spring of 2020. And even past his sentence, he's still going to be up under the law for five years after he get out. His entire life going to revolve around the feds. He want to open up a bank account, he got to go through the feds. His yearly income, straight to the feds. Financial records, feds. Anytime they ask, he got to submit everything he owns, his cars, houses, his self, DNA, drug testing, whatever and whenever they feel like it's a reason to. So yeah, he might be free, but he won't actually be free for a real long time. A sad case of a man full of potential. Be careful out in the world and don't throw your life away for a bag. It's never going to be worth it in the end.